Hi YouTube, I wanted to come on and do a video on what my art sort of toolkit setup looks like when I leave the house, um, something to take with me. I use some of this in the house as well, but it took me, you know, about a year of kind of figuring out what works for me and what I like to have on hand. I, I will say that I have many, many, many more art supplies than this, but these are primarily set up for when I leave the house and I want to take something with me so I can do... Um, sketching and or painting outside the house. So I'll start with this because I just finished this and I'm so proud of it that I want to show it. This is from Art Toolkit and Expeditionary Art. Um, I think she makes this available, Maria, she makes this available for people, students who have taken her classes and I took a class with her on atmospheric landscapes and it was really fantastic. But she has this gator board set up and I'll admit that when I received it, I didn't quite understand how to compose the pieces together, but I saw a quick video and um, I just put this together. And so I'm kind of proud of it. It doesn't look particularly amazing, but I made it and I'll use it, so it's great. It came in this plastic um, zip pouch. It's, um, I don't have the exact dimensions of this. This does look like, it's pretty big, nine by 12 maybe. And it has this foam gator board. I'm not sure what Gatorboard is, to be honest. It's like this really thick cardstocky thing with foam in the middle. And it came with these two rubber bands that are really good and firm. And it came with these strips of book tape. And that's why I didn't quite know what to do. So it turns out, actually, what I ended up doing was taping the sides down. Not in any particularly elegant fashion. It's kind of hard to see. This is about an 8.5 by 11 size. And you can open it. Oh, it's upside down. You can open it, and this is her, this was a sticker that she sent along. It's her um, logo. And I, in, in one of her videos, she shows that she uses kind of paper slats to use as like a folder. I happen to have this old, large um, 3M folder hanging um, clear um, adhesive pocket from Erin Condren sticking around. Um, so I decided to just use it here. And my plan is to use something like sheets from this gorgeous choosing keeping small art pad which has these cotton linen sheets which are absolutely fantastic for watercolor 100 percent cotton old rags that have been repurposed and recycled and it's just beautiful um, so here's a sheet that i did some swatching with and what i'll do is i'll take a bunch of these sheets and my plan anyway is to you know sort of put them in here carry them along and when i'm out and about I can, you know, I can open it up, pull one out, and then sort of attach it back on as so. These are super, they're super strong. And then I could sketch landscapes and urban settings and paint and do whatever I'd like. So that's the plan with this. You know, however, so it's nice to just have a sturdy board that I can use to do that. I um, oh gosh, I uh, so what I did was I took the book tape and I just taped it all around the sides. And this hinge was, I'd say, the hardest part because I had to figure out how to tape it so that the hinge would close. And so yeah, I think. This will be, it's super, super lightweight, but really sturdy. So I think it'll be good to have on hand if I really plan on doing a lot of sort of outdoor sketching and painting. I have this skater board. And then this is the primary um, art kit that I have. This is an A5 size. This is also from Art Toolkit Expeditionary Art. She just has all of these really great things that are really designed for uh, doing art on the go out in the field. This is made of a really sturdy Kurgera nylon fabric and I've taken this a number of places to sketch and things like that. And in here, so you can get these packs where it comes with, you can just get the get the cover, but you can have it filled with stuff as well. And so with this I ended up getting um, a palette. I have two separate palettes from her. She has these really great, super super thin, the only thing I have thinner, um, are my Viviva color sheets that I'll show later. But these are just so 
so compact and beautifully made. There you go, art tool, art dash toolkit.com. And let's see, this one I think I may have, nope. This one is the, I use this one for just the mixing palette. So she has this mixing tape down and there are these gorgeous magnetic strip pans and you can get them in multiple sizes. So anyways, I just use this one for mixing, three different mixing uh, plates here and then, or wells, and then this plate here. And the way that it's designed, it's just, it lips, there's a lip in here so things don't fall out. It's just really thoughtfully made and designed. It's the mixing palette and in here are my actual colors. These are the colors that I use the most when I'm out and about. So she has these, what she calls, I think these are Demi palettes. These are all these little ones. These, these six are a part of her, oh wait, six of these are a part of her Daniel Smith Essential set, which I have elsewhere as well. And then the rest of them I just curated. In here I have just the colors I use the most. The one that's missing is the Indian Throne Blue by Daniel Smith, but um, I'm gonna have to wait to put that one in. Just a lot of Daniel Smith, Mission Gold, I have a white gouache, a Sennelier, and there you go, that's what the, these are. Oh, and a Schminka. These are just colors I tend to use a lot when I'm out. These are fantastic. And they're all stuck in here with magnets. And it doesn't look that big, but it is plenty big, and there's also another mixing surface up here. And these just do not fall out. They are sturdy and Super, super slim. I, yeah, these are just so, so great. Love these. Okay. Has her little logo at the bottom. Um, in here, I also have, so this I got separately at a local art shop. This is a little water receptacle. Um, what I like about this one, first of all, is that it, <laughs> screw it. But the other thing I like about it is it has this clip. It makes it a little bulky to carry around, but it's okay. It has this clip that what you can do is you can clip it onto um, paper, uh, sketch pad or something so that the water doesn't go flying or you accidentally knock it over or something like that. So that, that's nice and handy to have. I also have another water holder. This So this is on Art Toolkit's site, but it was out of stock for the longest time. So I actually ended up going to the source to get this Sea to Summit. And it's just like the perfect little size. It does freak me out just a little bit because it's so narrow at the bottom, at the base. I'm always afraid it's gonna top over, but this has been really, really great. And I just push it together when I'm ready to go. And it's so, so compact. It's really great. It is more compact than this one. This one is a bit sturdier. I have both of those. And then I have in here, this is from her as well. I think this was, I don't remember if this came with her extra. This is a little spray bottle, a little mini one. Great to spray paper on my palette. Um, it came with this little syringe. That is really handy if you have water, when you, if you want to. It also came with this water brush. So um, I can't remember if it came with this one or if this is one I had. But this is just a great way if you have a water bottle on hand to fill it with water and then refill this thing so you aren't trying to pour a bottle of water into this little tiny hole right here if you run out. It's just always handy to have a water brush if you are really in a hurry and you want to do something quick. So there's that. I think that's everything in there. And then it came, let's see. Two little, it came with two little binder clips. These are mini, a ruler. It also came with um, a pencil and a fine liner. And I normally carry around a pencil and fine liner, but I don't have it in here right at the moment because I have it in here, which I'll show you later because I use that daily. This is really meant for when I'm leaving the house, which is why I have a bunch of travel watercolor brushes. These are my primary watercolor brushes. Actually, let me move pull. There's one in here too. I think I'd say I have, what is that? Two, four, six, seven. This one is Rosemary & Co. I just picked this up from Art Toolkit, Expeditionary Art. This one is an eradicator. I do find that it's useful to have an eradicator. This one is nice and broad. So I like using this. 
these two are, I think I should label these because their labeling is non-existent. Um, I think this was an Escoda Reserva. Yeah, these are all, I think almost all of these are Kalinske Sable. Um, these two are, this is a Escoda Reserva size two round, an Escoda Reserva size four round. I'm not gonna put those lids back on while they're dry. And then here I have, oh, this is not Kalinske Sable. This is a silver black velvet six round. I love these two. So here we have, there's just versatile sizes to have on hand, two, four, six. I think I have an eight somewhere too. Um, this is a Rosemary & Co. R5. I don't remember what these codes stand for, so I kind of have to look at them. Oh, I think this is a Kalinske Sable dagger. I, I really enjoy using these daggers. These two are also Rosemary & Co. I think, so this this one I think I actually got off of the Rosemary & Co. website. I don't remember them. <laughs> this one is an R9, and this is a big brush. This is a size, oh, I don't know, is that an eight or a 10? This is more like a squirrel. I don't remember what, what this is, to be honest. I on their site, we'll say exactly what they are. They have all of these letter number codes. This one is R12, and this one is like a medium dagger. And this is really fun. But I, after using these for a while, I do find that I like um, like the da striper daggers that are a little bit longer, kind of like this brush. So longer slanted ones. But this is, this is still fun to use. And so I have like a good variety. Looking at this now, I really should get myself a flat brush, travel brush, if I'm gonna end up doing more plein air stuff. But I do not, admittedly, I am, um, I like the idea of painting outside the house more than I actually do it. So we'll see if I end up doing that more. I may pick up a flat travel one. I have a blue shop towel. These are just great to have, obviously. A fabric castell eraser. And just whatever notebook I happen to be using at the moment. Here I had a moleskin sketchbook. The last time I was out, we went to um, Pigeon Point Lighthouse uh, towards Big Sur in the Bay Area. And um, while well, my kids were playing on the beach, I think I just sketched that. And I had planned on painting it, but didn't have time to do that. So this is my out, this is my sort of, I'm going out of the house. I want to paint, I want to sketch set up. And I, and I really like this. I mean, it's not the teeniest, tiniest thing. This has to, it's, you have to be sort of deliberate, but you know, if I want to carry everything with me, which I, I am somebody who likes to carry everything in the kitchen sink, then you can't really do better than this. I really enjoy this. There's that. And then this is the Etcher. Oh, I don't remember what this was called. This is meant to be used in conjunction with a big satchel. Like you can attach it to the big satchel. It's big and it's, it's, I mean, this is solidly, constructively made. Um, it's waterproof. It does have a, a shoulder strap, an adjustable shoulder strap that you can attach this way to be carried like this or to be carried landscape. If you want to, you know, dangle your, it's basically a glorified expensive pencil case and it is very pricey for a pencil case. I think I paid close to $70 for this on Amazon. Um, but I have it and I find myself using it every day. So this one, th this one is packed with all of my supplies that I do use almost daily since I do sketch and just play around at home. So in the front and you know, when I'm lying in bed, which I'm doing a lot lately since I injured myself, I am, it's just good to have these Viva color sheets, which, you know, are not, I don't think they're, um, they're not color fast, light fast, you know, you're not gonna be selling artwork with these paints, but these are just fantastic to play with, um, put in sketchbooks, to put in journals. The colors are super, super vibrant, um, and they're just fun, and they're incredibly portable. I mean, they're just paper. They're so, this is such a great idea. It's made in India. I have a couple different collaborations of these, and I have, uh, there's also a really great wooden set that goes with it. 
uh, like a wooden carrier, but I like it to be super compact in here. And it's just all of these fantastic colors with this really great sheet in between so that usually when I'm on the go, I'm holding this and I'm quickly going from one color to the next. And so I need to be flipping these when the paint is still wet. And so it's really important to have this wax sheet so that it's not polluting the color on the other side. So you can see all of the colors here. And then there's a little, the name of the color is there and you can have a little swatch area so you can see what it looks like. Because some of these colors look absolutely nothing like the end color, like nothing. It's really fascinating. This one is a great example. This is definitely green and the color is purple. It's called Violet. So it's really good to have that. And in the back, there is this, um, this paper mixing palette, which looks like it would not work well at all, but honestly, it works really well. I've been really pleasantly surprised with that. So if I really need to care, um, travel light, all I need is this, a pencil, oops, a water brush, and some paper. So it's good to have on hand. So in here, it is fully waterproof, has a little D-ring. I think this is the D-ring that came with this pouch, but I can't remember anymore. So a lot of stuff in here. I mean, it's designed to carry more. I actually, you know, if you think about all of the slots that this thing has, I, I'm not sure you could actually carry everything it seems like you should be able to, but um, because it gets really, really bulky. There's a full length zip pocket back here. Nothing is here. I'm not sure that much would fit there anyway. It's a full length slip pocket back here. I just kind of prop my um, kneadable eraser. My favorite one to use, Faber Castell. And then there are all of these loops. Some of them are big ones in the back. Some of them are smaller ones in the front. Um, I don't use all of them. They're just kind of in there randomly. So I'll kind of just go in order. These are the ones I, I have. These are just the ones that I've been using lately. This is my Micron 01. It's used for everything. This is my Zebra Hard Fuda Pen. This is the one I actually use for everything. It's definitely my favorite sketch drawing pen for absolutely everything. This one I got because everyone seems to really love it for sketching. This is the Pentel Stilo. And it's the one that has like this funny looking, funny looking, I don't know, head. I am, um, yeah, it's fine. It's not, I don't, I don't love it. So actually I just have it as backup. It's not my favorite. I have two Faber-Castell metallic pens. I think I got this in some art box. I don't remember which one anymore, but they are lovely. And so they're good to have on hand just in case I want some accents. And then of course the Uniball Signo white gel pen for accents, watercolor accents. In the back I have two, let's see, these are the Pilot Parallel pens. I have it in 2.4 and 1.5, these are huge. They are beautiful though. I don't know if this is gonna work. It's been a long time since I've used these. It's good to have on hand if I just feel like it. Oh yeah, this thing is super absorbent though. There you go. But good for calligraphy. It's just fun to play with. That's for these. That one is green and this one is the Pilot Turquoise. Here in the back I have this stainless steel ruler. This is a fantastic ruler. Made in Japan, stainless tempered, super thick, millimeters, centimeters, inches, Super, super lovely, but, and it's heavy. Um, the edges are crazy, crazy sharp. Um, crazy sharp. It is gonna rip up everything. So you have to be a little careful, but um, I have maybe 30 rulers and nothing is better than that one. So it's a really good ruler. I have a set of these Copic 
multi-liners. These are the disposable ones. But um, I just carry around the 1.0 and the 0.03. Um, really thick, really thin, since I have my 01 micron there. These are just good to have. I carry around my beloved Pearl Blackwing, which is my, which is the middle lead one, my favorite. I have a lead holder, not lead holder, what's it called? And these are the best pencils, but I do find myself using this the most. This is my favorite. This is my Rotring uh, 600 drop clutch two millimeter lead holder. I am probably gonna get the 600 because I do like the kind of the heft of the 600 a little bit more, but it, this is a workhorse. I love this, I'm gonna keep this. I In here right now I have a two, I have an, uh, a two H lead or H lead, I can't remember. Um, because for watercoloring, I like to have really faint lead marks, but two B is my favorite lead to use. So I think I'll maybe put the 2B in here, and then in the 800 I'll put the um, 2H. So once I get that, but this is just, this is the one I use every day. I love this, I use it for everything. I have a Pilot Color Eno 0.07, and a light blue color pencil. I think this is a 2B light blue. I just like to be in terms of lead grade. It's soft, I don't need to push that hard, you can see it. it doesn't always erase that well for watercoloring, but I love it. And this, this is a Rotary 800 plus, which means it's not, so I wanna get this in the 800. This is the lead holder. This is not a lead holder. This one has the heft of the 800 though, which I really, really like. It's a little bit thicker. The barrel is a little bit, I don't know, everything just feels a little bit more solid. This is a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil, not a lead holder. And this is a stylus, which actually I end up using a ton. I use this for my cell phone, my tablet, Chromebook. Um, I do find that the stylus is very handy and useful. And when you depress the top, it doesn't, nothing goes down. So what I have to do is I have to flip it. I have to, I guess, um, yeah, turn the knob here and then the pencil comes out. And then it's just a normal 0.7 millimeter uh, mechanical pencil. And in here I have 2B lead because it's my favorite lead. And then I could undo it and it's a stylus again. So this I just like to have on hand mostly for jotting quick notes or mostly as a stylus. For drawing, sketching, I really like the lead holder more. So that is, you know, there are just plenty more options of where to put things. There's a loop here in the middle. There's a flap up here. I don't make use of all of it. There's a Velcro back here to like slide this into backpacks of sorts. Um, I don't do that. Realistically, if I'm gonna leave the house, I don't know, I haven't left the house with this yet. Maybe in the rain, this would be great. So I can't say that I'd be sketching in the rain, but it is, this is very, very durable. I mean, it, this is more durable than this one, only because, only because this one is co coated in this crazy waterproof fabric, um, and it is thicker. But um, I love, I love both of them. I say, I think about this more as like an everyday rugged, drawing utensils, everything. This one is really dedicated more to sketching, painting outdoors. So I love them both. And this is, so this is my setup for Art on the Go. Thank you, bye.